of you. This is Mathematics for Grade 8. Today, we are going to talk about data representation and interpretation. So, quickly take out your mathematics textbooks and turn to page number 122. There, you can find this lesson. Right, before moving to the lesson, I thought of telling you what you are going to learn after studying this lesson. So, by studying this lesson, you will be able to represent data in a stem and leaf diagram, find the maximum value, minimum value and the range of a collection of data using a stem and leaf diagram and find the mode, median, mean and range of a collection of raw data. Right. Now, before moving to grade 8 lesson, I thought of recalling you what you have learned in grade 6 and grade 7. Right. Can you remember in grade 6, you have learned on picture graphs, isn't that so? We have denoted uh, values using pictures in picture graphs. So, you can see a picture graph uh, in my slide. Right, then we have learned how to uh, represent data on a bar chart or else we name it as a column graph. Right, first we have represented data on a column graph, then we have learned how to represent data using multiple column graphs as well. So, in grade 6 we have learned picture graphs, in grade 7 we have learned column graphs. Right. Now, this year, what are we going to learn? This year, we are going to learn about stem and leaf diagrams. Right. Have you heard this word before? Stem and leaf diagrams. This is a new word for you, isn't that so? Right. Here also, we are representing data using this diagram. So, I thought of teaching you how to uh, represent data on a stem and leaf diagram uh, by using a question. So, at the very beginning of the lesson, shall we move on to a question? Have a look at this. Learn students have obtained following marks for a mathematics text paper in grade 8. Now, these marks are given out of 40. Right, now have a look at these marks and now these are the marks. 20, 24, 19, 20, 14, 8, 33, 6, 36, 20 and 35. Right. Now looking at these data, what can you say? What about these numbers? I can observe only two places in each and every number. Isn't that so? Each and every number consists of only the ones place and the tens place. Right. I have got only two decimal places. Now I am going to represent this data on a stem and leaf diagram. Right. When we are representing data on a stem and leaf diagram, if we are having only two decimal places uh, in the data, then, of course, we have to take the ones place under the leaf. Then, then that means uh, the tens place should be taken under the stem. So, we will represent this data on a stem and leaf diagram. Now, have a look at this one. Right. I have got 20, 24, 19, 20, 14, 8, 33, 6, 36, 20 and 35. Right. Now, as I have mentioned before, uh, under stem, I have to mention only the tens place. Right. Now, I have represented it in an order. First, I have mentioned 0. That means, I am going to mention there uh, the numbers between 0 and 10. That means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. 
So, if I have uh, one or more of those numbers, I can represent it uh, near that 0, right. Now, when I represent 1 in stem, that means I have to mention on all tens there. When I represent 2 in stem, that means I have to mention only 20 is there. When I represent 3 under stem, that means I have to mention only 30 is there, right. Now, I have told you that the uh, digit on the ones place should be written under leaf, right. We will start with the first one. First, we have got 20, right. Ah, yes, you are correct. We have to mention it under 20s. Now, we have to go uh, look at uh, the stem. You have to look at 20s there. Okay. Uh, in front of that, we have to put 0 under the leaf. Right. Then I have got 24. Once again, it belongs to 20s. That therefore, I have to mention 4 near 0. Right. And this is very special thing. You cannot put commas in between. The only thing you have to do is, if you have more numbers to put under the same stem, you have to keep a space in between the digits. Right. Next one, we have got 19. Ah, that should be, belong, that is belongs to uh, tens, isn't that so? Therefore, I am going to put 9 in front of 1. Right. Then once again, I have got 20. Once again, it belongs to 20s. So, in front of 4 uh, in leaf, I am going to put a 0. Right. Then I have got 14. That belongs to 10s. Therefore, I have to look at 1 in stem side. In front of that, I have got 9 under leaf. So, in front of 9, I have to put 4. Right. Once again, I can't put any commas. I have to leave a small space there. Then I have got 8. So, it is a number between 0 and 10. Therefore, in front of 0 in stem side, I have to put 8 on leaf side. Then I have got 33. Ah, now, that is belongs to 30s. So, in front of 3 in stem side, I have to put 3 on leaf side. Right. Then I have got 6. Once again, it is a value in between 0 and 10. So, near 8, that means in front of 0 in stem side, I have to put 6 on leaf side. Right. Then I have got 36. Uh, once again, it belongs to 30s. So, we have to look at uh, the stem side. Uh, we can see 3 there. In front of that, we have to put 6 uh, near leave side. Right. Then I have got 20 once again. Isn't that so? Once again, it belongs to 20s. So, I can mention 0 near uh, the 0 that I have put previously. Once again, I should not put any commas. I have to keep a small space in between the digits. Finally, I have got 35. So, it belongs to 30s. So, you have to look at 3 in stem side. In front of that, in the leaf side, you have to mention 5. And there is another important thing in stem and leaf diagrams. You have to write the key. That means, you have to take one of these data and you have to represent what you have meant by putting numbers in stem and leaf sides. That means, look at this. Now, this is my key here. Now, that means 3 is on stem side. Another 3 is there on leaf side. That means uh, the value of it is 33. Right. Now, is that over? 
it is not over. My stem and leaf diagram is not yet completed. So, have a look at this. Now, in this stem and leaf diagram, what can you say about the order? Just have a look at the leaf side. Under leaf, uh, the order is not clearly mentioned. It is not in the correct order. Therefore, I am going to rearrange it according to the ascending order and then I am going to mention it. So, when we consider about 0 in stem, in front of that, uh, in leaf we have got 8 and 6. So, we know the values of those are 8 and 6. So, the smaller one is 6. So, we have to mention it first. Then we have to mention 8. Now, in the second column, uh, we have got 9 and 4 in leaf side. So, we have to once again rearrange it according to the ascending order. So, 4 come first, then comes 9. Right. In my third column, I have got 0, 4, 0, 0. Once again, it is not in the ascending order. So, I have to rearrange it as 0, 0, 0, then comes 4. Finally, in my last column, I have got 3, 6 and 5. Uh, once again, it is not in the ascending order. So, I have rearranged it as 3, 5 and 6. Uh, now, we can write the key of it. Once again, 3 in stem side, 3 in leaf side. That means 33 of the value. Right. Now, you know how to represent data on a stem and leaf diagram, right. Previous, in my previous example, the set of data consists of only two places, that means ones place and the tens place. Now, when we consider about the data between 0 and 99, you can come to a conclusion like this, right. The value in the unit place of a datum is indicated as the leaf and the value in the tens place is indicated as the stem. Always we have to take the value in the ones place to under the leaf, then value in the tens place under stem. If we have to put only data uh, with in between 0 and 99. Right. We'll move on to little bit different example. Now, here we had data only between 0 and 99. Now, this time I am going to have data more than that. The values are more than that. So, we will move on to the next example now. Example number 2. The heights of some students in a class are given below in centimeters. Right. You also may have measured your height in centimeters. So, uh, uh, here also we have measured uh, the height of some students in a class in centimeters. So, we will have a look at their heights 118, 123, 137, 110, 145, 153, 112, 133, 142, 151, 120, 127 and finally 145. Right here we can see all the data more than 100 but less than 200. That means we can say those are in between 100 and 200. Right. Now, previously we have learnt how to represent data on a uh, stem and leaf diagram. The values of the data are in between 0 and 99. Now, this time it is more than 100. Therefore, how to represent this data on a stem and leaf diagram? We will see. Right. Now, they have asked us to represent this data in a stem and leaf diagram. This time, once again, I am going to get uh, one, the digits on the ones place under leaf. 
then digits on the tens place and hundreds place together under stem right now we'll put this data in a stem and leaf diagram so we have got 110s 120s 130s 140s and 150s so therefore i have put 11 12 13 14 and 15 under stem that means i have put the uh, digit on the tens place and the digit on the hundreds place under stem right now i'm going to put the digit on the ones place under leaf so if i get uh, 118 i have to put uh, it under leaf in front of 11 why it belongs to 110 so it should be uh, written under leaf in front of 11 right if i get 123 that belongs to 120s therefore i have to write 3 in in front of 12 then if i take 137 that belongs to 130s therefore i have to write 7 in front of 13 then if i get 110 uh, that belongs to 110s therefore i have to put 0 in front of 11 if i get 145 that means it belongs to 140 40s therefore i have to put 5 in front of 14 if i get 153 that means it belongs to 150s therefore i have to write 3 in front of 15 so when i get 112 that means it belongs to 110s uh, therefore i have to write it write number 2 in front of 11 then when i get 133 once again it belongs to 130s therefore i have to write the digit 3 in front of 13 when i have a look at 142 that belongs to 140s therefore i have to write the digit 2 in front of 14 so if i get 151 uh, that belongs to 150s therefore i have to put 1 in front of 15 so in 120 that belongs to 120s therefore i have to put 0 in front of 12 so once again in 127 that also belongs to 120s therefore i have to put 7 in, in front of 12 finally i have got 145 that belongs to 140s therefore i have to write the digit 5 in front of 14 right once again i have to mention the key i have taken the uh, value as 137 there i have put 13 under stem and 7 under leaf that means the value is 137 right once again is it finished it's not you have to rearrange it according to the ascending order my stem is in the ascending order but what can i say about my leaf side it's not in the correct order so we'll rearrange it in the ascending order now right when we rearrange it first of all when we talk about the first line we have got 802 so we have to rearrange it as 028 when i talk about the second line we have 307 so when i rearrange it it becomes 037 then what about the third line we have got 7 and 3 so when we rearrange it in the ascending order it becomes 3 and 7 in the fourth line i have got 5 2 and 5 so when i rearrange it in the ascending order it becomes 2 5 and 5 
finally in the last line I have got 3 and 1. So, when I rearrange it I can write it as 1 and 3. So, once again I have to write the key there. Uh, once again my key is uh, 13 in stem side and 7 on the leaf side that means 137. Now, in this example, we have discussed about the uh, values in between 100 and 999. In our previous example, we had values only between 100 and 200, but this rule can be taken for the values from 100 to 999. What is this rule? When we are uh, putting the data uh, when we are representing uh, the data on a stem and leaf diagram, when the data is from 100 to 999, the value in the units place of a datum is indicated as the leaf and the value in the tens and hundreds places uh, considered together is indicated as the stem. Now, uh, have a look at our stem and leaf diagram and see whether it is true. Yes, we have put only the ones place in leaf side and the tens place and the hundreds place together in stem side. Right, once again I have not put any uh, commas in between the uh, digits, I have put only small gaps. You also have to consider about that never put commas, you have to keep a small gap between the digits uh, in the leaf side. Now, in previous examples, we have discussed about the data in between 0 and 99, then 100 and 999, right. What about the decimals? If decimal comes, what would happen? We will see. Have a look at this example now. The masses of the pumpkin for sale in a certain shop on a particular day are given below in kilograms. Now in my picture we can see some pumpkin. Have you been to the market to buy pumpkin? Have you measured uh, the mass of pumpkin? What can you say? Uh, can you get it exactly in kilograms? exactly whole numbers in kilograms? No, there are grams also. For an example, uh, you might get a pumpkin of uh, 5 kilograms, 100 grams. So, if I want to represent it only in kilograms, it becomes 5.1 kilograms. So, if I uh, measure pumpkin of mass 5.7 kilograms, that means it has 5 kilograms and 700 grams. If I am mentioning it in grams, it is 5700 grams, right. Now, in this example, I have got the mass of pumpkins, right. You can observe there are decimals here. We have got 5.1, 5.5, 4.0, 4.8, 5.6. Likewise, we have got uh, the values from 3.9 to uh, 6.8. Isn't that so? Now, we are going to mention these values in a stem and leaf diagram. Now, how to do that? In previous cases, I have told you to put the digit on the ones place under leaf and a rest of the digits under stem. But in this case, since it has only one place in decimal side, I am going to put the digit in the decimal place. That means, digit in the, on the first decimal place under leaf and I am going to put the value in the ones place under stem. So, we will have a look at that one, right. Now, I am representing it in a stem and leaf diagram, right. Now, here uh, under stem, I have represented the digits 
on the ones place. So, on the leaf I have represented the digits on the first decimal place, right. Now, it is little bit different uh, when we compare to the previous ones, is not that so? So, when I look at this stem and leaf diagram, we have to identify that we have mentioned for the digits on the first decimal place on the leaf and the digits on the uh, ones place on the stem. How to identify that? Uh, for that, we have to mention the key, right. Here, I have taken the uh, data of 3.6. So, I have put 3 under stem and 6 under leaf. Therefore, that means 3.6 in value, right. So, it is easy for us to represent decimals also in stem and leaf diagrams, is not that so, right. Now, we will move on to some questions that we can come across on the stem and leaf diagrams, right. I am going to use the same stem and leaf diagram that I have drawn right now. So, we will move on to some questions, right. First one, what is the mass of the heaviest pumpkin? And now, how to find that? You know that in stem and leaf diagrams, we always put values in ascending order. That means, the value represented by the first digit of leaf side means the lowest value, uh, that means the smallest value and the greatest one is the last digit in the final row. So, they are asking what is the mass of the heaviest pumpkin. That means, we have to go for the greatest value. So, here we can see uh, the last digit under stem is 6, the last digit under leaf is 1. So, we know that 6 means the for, uh, ones place digit, 1 means the first decimal placed digit. Therefore, what is the a mass of the heaviest pumpkin that is 6.1 kilogram, right. Now, we know how to find the greatest value of the stem and leaf graph uh, by looking at the graph. Now, we will move on to another question. What is the mass of the pumpkin with the least mass? And now, they are asking for the least one. Now, previously also I have discussed, uh, we have uh, represented uh, the leaf side in ascending order. We always represent the value, we always put value into the stem and leaf diagram in ascending order. That means, the smallest one comes first. So, the smallest value in stem side is 3, the smallest value in leaf side is 6. Therefore, they are, the 3 represents the ones place digit and 6 represents the first decimal place digit. Therefore, uh, 3 from stem side, 6 from leaf side means 3.6 kilograms. So, that is the uh, mass of the smallest pumpkin in that market, is not that so? Right, then we will move on to another one. This time, I want to find the range of the data which is represented in this stem and leaf diagram. So, how to find the range? Now, we know the greatest value that is 6.1 and we know the least value that is 3.6. To get the range, we have to subtract the least value from the greatest value. Therefore, 6.1 kilograms minus 3.6 kilograms, my answer is 2.5 kilograms, right. Now, we know how to find the range as well. So, we will move on to another one. This time, what should be done? How many pumpkins weight more than 5 kilograms, right. Now, we have to get the stem and leaf diagram. 
right so 5 kilograms means 5 should be on one's place so we have to have a look at the stem side so 5 is there so i told you in leaf side we have represented the uh, digits on first decimal place so when we consider about uh, zeros in leaf side that means it's 5.0 that means those are equals to 5 kilograms so we want to uh, count the number of pumpkins weight more than 5 kilograms so we can go for 5.1 once again 5.1 5 5.2, 5.4, 5.4, 5.5, 5.6, 5.7, then we can come across 6.0, 6.0 and finally 6.1. So how many pumpkins are there? Just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11 pumpkins are there okay we will quickly move on to another example this is my example number four this time i have come with some mangoes have a look at these mangoes now the masses of the nine mangoes in a pile of a mangoes are given below in grams now these are in grams we have got uh, 128 grams uh, 86 grams, 82 grams, 87 grams, 95 grams, 104 grams, 75 grams, 124 grams and 95 grams. Now these are the masses of 9 mangoes. Right, first one, find the range of the above set of data. Uh, this time they have asked, they have not asked us to represent it in a stem and leaf diagram. They are just giving us the raw data and then asking us to find the range. Right. Now once again we have to think about the greatest value and the least value in this set, uh, in the collection of this data. Now what is the least value? Least value is uh, 75 grams then what is the greatest value that is 128 grams right now uh, as we have done in the previous one here also to get the range you have to subtract the least mass from the greatest mass so we have to subtract 75 grams from 128 grams so my answer is 53 grams right my second question find the median of the data collection right what is median have you come across this word before what does that mean right when the data is arranged in ascending order median means the mid value of their collection of data Therefore, first of all, we have to rearrange this data in ascending order. So, we will rearrange it 75, 82, 86, 87, 95, 100, once again 95, 104, 124, 128. Right. Now, we need to find the mid value of it. Since it has 9 uh, data that means the number of data is a odd number so we can easily find the mid value of it right so we have to find the value at the center so how to find that we have got nine data there so I am going to add one and then divide the uh, addition or divide the sum by two so nine plus one is ten 10 divided by 2 is 5. So, the fifth data is the median of the set of data. How to count that? We have to first rearrange it in ascending order. Then we have to uh, find the fifth data. So, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So, my fifth data is 95. Therefore, the median can be taken as 95. 
Now, uh, this method can be used for any set of data uh, with odd number of uh, data in it. So, if you have odd number of data to find the median, step number 1, you have to rearrange it in ascending order. Then, you have to add 1 uh, to the number of data and get the sum and divide it by 2 then you can find the place where your median is, right. Now, this differs uh, when you have even number of data, we will talk about it later on, right. Then the next question, find the mode of the data collection. Now, we have to think about the mode. What is this mode? Have you come across the word once again? We will see. In a collection of data, some of the values could be identical. The value which occurs most often is called the mode of that collection of da data, right. There can be more than one identical values in a collection of data, but when we have a look at this collection, we have only one identical value, 95 is there for two times, is not that so? So, 95 is the value which occurs most often in this collection of data. Therefore, I can say the mode of this collection of data is 95 grams, right. Then the next one, find the mean of the data collection, right. So, first we found the range, then we came for median then the mode, now finally the mean. What does that mean? How to find the mean? Before moving to uh, this question, I thought of asking you a question. Can you remember how your average is calculated after uh, obtaining the results of your term tests? After obtaining the results of the, your term test, your teachers or your parents might have calculated the average. How did you do that? You have add all your marks together and divided it by the number of subjects you have sat for the examination. Is not that so? Once again, I will say you have add uh, all your marks together and divided it by the number of subjects that you have sat for the examination. Then you got the average. Now here the mean is also the same. Here also we have to do the same thing. We have to add all the values together. I have got uh, some values. So I can add 128 plus 60, uh, 86 plus 82 plus 87, plus 95, plus 104, plus 75, plus 124, plus 95. Then I have divided the uh, sum by the number of data. Here I have got 9 data in my collection. So I have divided the sum by 9, right. Uh, the sum is 873. When I divide it by 9, I can get the answer as 97. So, the mean of this data collection is 97 grams, right. We will once again move on to another example. We will see this example may be little different from the previous one. We will see the number of bread for sale in a certain bakery on a particular day are given below. I will say it once again, the number of bread for sale in a certain bakery on a particular day are given below. So, we can re read it out 43, 40, 39, 37, 43, 47, 47, 55, 36 and finally 42. So, first of all, we have to find the range of the above set of data, right. Now, you know how to find the range. First of all, you have to come across the highest value or, or the greatest value. Then, you have to subtract the least value from that. So, here 55 and the least value is 36. 
So, we have to subtract 36 from 55, then my answer is 19. So, here the range of this set of data is equals to 19. So, when we move on to the second part of it, find the median of the data collection. Once again, you know how to uh, find the median, but here how many data are here? We will count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Uh, that means here we have got an even number of data in my set uh, collection of data. Therefore, we cannot use the previous method. Here the median that means the mid values comes in between two numbers. Isn't that so? When my first of all we have to arrange it in the ascending order, then the median comes in, in between two numbers. We will see. First we will arrange it in ascending order. So, it is 36, 37, 39, 40, 42, 43, once again 43, 47, once again 47, finally 55. As it has even number of data, we cannot use the previous method. Now, what should we do? So, first of all, we have to find the two numbers in the middle of this set of data. So, how to find that? First, we are going to divide the number of data by 2. So, here I have got 10 number of data. So, when I divide it by 2, then it comes the fifth value. Then, I have to once again divide the number of data by 2 and add 1 to it. So, 10 divided by 2 is once again 5. 5 plus 1 is 6. So, 5 and 6 are the two numbers in the middle of this uh, set of data. So, how to get the median now? First of all, we will see what are the two numbers. Ah, we have got 42 and 43. So, to get the median, we have to have uh, the addition of, we have to add 42 and 43 together. Then we have to divide the sum by 2. So, when we add 42 and 43, it is 85. 85 divided by 2 is 42 and half. It is as a mixed number. So, you can write it as a decimal also 42.5. Now, uh, we have done two parts of the question. So, we will move on to the third part of it. Right. Find the mode of the data collection. Right. Once again, uh, you can remember what I have told you. Is not that so? What is mode? Mode means uh, the value which occurs most often. So, we will see uh, here I can see 47 twice and what else? What else can you observe? Yes, we can see 43 also twice. Now, uh, 43 is in 2 times, 47 is also in 2 times. So, we can't uh, choose 1 from uh, either of it. Therefore, we have to have two values as mode of this collection of data. So, here the modes are 43 and 47. Right. Next one, find the mean of the collection of data. Right. Now, we are going to find the mean. Can you remember how we got the average? The example I have given you? Right. You have to use the same method. So, we are going to Add all the values together and divide the sum by number of data. Here we have got 10 data. So, once I add all the values together, that is 429. When I divide it by 10, it becomes 42.9. So, that is the mean of the uh, data collection. Right. Now, we have done some questions. We have done five examples by now. So, I am going to give you another question. Try to do it before me now. Right. We will read the question. Timing of 
11 competitors in 400 meters race is given below in seconds. Right. Now, these are the data. These are the set of data. Right. Now, there are 11 competitors. Their times are given in seconds. So, by looking at that, can you tell me what is the maximum time elapsed? Elapsed means the time are taken by the competitor. So, what is the maximum time elapsed? We will see. Yes, that is 64 seconds. Uh, the competitor number 7 has taken 64 seconds. That is the maximum time elapsed. Then next one. What is the minimum time elapsed? Now, have a good look. Okay. We can see First competitor has end the race in 58 seconds. So, we can say 58 seconds is the minimum time elapsed. So, now we have asked to find the range of the set of data. Now, we know the maximum value, we know the minimum value. The maximum time is 64 uh, seconds and the minimum time is 58 seconds. So, to find the range, we have to subtract the minimum value from the maximum value. So, 64 minus 58, we can get the answer as 6 seconds. Right. Then, uh, we have asked to find the mode of the set of data. That means, this data collection. So, what is the mode? Can you see 61 seconds is there in 3 Occasions, isn't that so? Computed 2, 5, and 10 have completed the race in 61 seconds. Therefore, the mode is equals to 61 seconds. Then we have to find the median of the set of data. You know that median means the mid value. Here we have got 11 competitors, therefore, we have odd number of data. That means you can use the first method we did. Isn't that so? First of all, we have to arrange uh, the set of data in ascending order. Then we have to get the, find the uh, value in the center. So, we, uh, there are 11 data. So, add 1 to it. Divide the sum by 2. 11 plus 1 is 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So, sixth value is 61. Therefore, 61 is the median of the uh, collection of this data. Now, we are going to uh, go for a question in your mathematics textbook. So, in exercise 27.3, I am going to talk about the sixth question. That is, they are in page number 136. Right, we will read the question. The mean of the masses of four children is 34 kilograms. When another child joined, the mean mass increased to 38 kilograms. First one, find the total mass of the four children. Now, how could, uh, did we get mean? If there are only four children, uh, we have add the mass of all four children together and divided it by 4. That is how to get the mean of the 4 children. So, uh, here the, we know the mean and we know the number of children. So, they are asking us to find the total mass of the 4 children. Therefore, we have to multiply the mean by 4. So, 34 multiplied by 4. So, we can get uh, 136 kilograms. Right. Then, question number 2. What is the mass of the child who joined later? Now, this is another child joined and the mean changed to 38. Right. So, we will find how to find that we know the total mass of the four children. That is 136 kilograms. Now, if the mean is changed to 38, uh, we will find the total mass of the five children. How to get that? 38 kilograms multiplied by 5. So, it is 190 kilograms. Ah, right. Now, we know the total mass of all 5 children and we know the mass of 
all four previous four children. Therefore, we can find the mass of the fifth child by subtracting the total mass of all five children by subtracting the mass of the four children. So, 190 kilograms minus 136 kilograms, we can get 54 kilograms. So, that is the mass of the fifth child. Right. Then the third part. Show that the mean mass of 34 kilograms does not change if the mass of the child who joined later is also 34 kilograms. Now, if the uh, child mass of the child who joined later was 34 kilograms, then previously the total mass of four children was 136. So, if the fifth child mass is also 34, we can get the mass of all five as my uh, adding. 34 kilograms to 136 kilograms. So, it becomes 170. So, when we get the mean of those 5, uh, how to get that? 170 divided by 5, then it becomes 34. So, if the mass of the fifth child is also 34 kilograms, the mean would not change. Now, I think the lesson is clear for you. So, before we wind up the lesson, I thought of summarize the things that we have learned today. So, first of all, we have discussed how to put data in the stem and leaf diagrams. Then, we have discussed what the mode is. Mode is the value which occurs most often. Then, we have discussed on median. Then, we have discussed two ways of finding the median. Uh, when there are odd number of data in the collection, uh, we have to uh, add 1 to the number of uh, data and divide it by 2 to find the place where our median is. But if there are even number of data in the collection, uh, in the mi middle place of the collection, there are two numbers. So, uh, we have to find both numbers. First, we have to divide the number of data by 2. Then, we, once again, we have to divide the data, number of data by 2 and add 1. Uh, finally, we found, we learned how to find the mean. So, the mean could be taken by uh, adding all the values in the collection and dividing the sum by the number of data in the collection. Finally, we found the range that is the greatest value minus the least value. Right. Now, that is it for the lesson and now it is time for you to do the homework. There are some exercises uh, under the 27th lesson of your mathematics textbook. Right. Now, I think the lesson is clear for you. So, if you want to go through the lesson once again, or if you have missed the lesson, you can watch this lesson through the YouTube channel, Channel NIE. So, that is it for today. See you soon. Take care.